I'm Christy with the Sunlight uh, Mentor Team, and I am glad to be coming to you today to talk about some um, encouragement, basically, quotable encouragement. Um, I had this idea um, over the past couple of weeks as I was looking at what was coming in in my in our small group and um, just looking for ideas looking for what does um, what seems to be helping and sometimes I just find that a small idea helps so as people are joining I just wanted to basically um, encourage not with a checklist or anything to add a burden but just kind of a grab bag um, quotable encouragement that you can take what's helpful leave what's not helpful and walk away not with another thing that you need to do but just maybe some an idea that you can take with you not an idea that's gonna weigh you down if you hear something and think oh oh that sounds like added added stress but then just forget about it and don't even think about it again you don't have time for that um, take what encourages you and um, and then let that help you um, as you go and sometimes a simple idea just the simplest thing that I have heard from maybe a mom along the way I contacted some of my mentors um, about a week ago and got some feedback from them some that I just remembered from them from the over the years things that they've told me that helped me over the years and then I heard some things from some of you this week um, that I really liked and so I thought I would add that in as well in case someone missed it and uh, or someone wasn't in our group or um, you know someone in the larger group might have shared something as well so um, and someone might not have seen it so I thought I would just bring it to you and um, hope Hopefully, um, hi, I'm glad you're joining us today. Um, basically, I wanted to just give this a little bit of encouragement. And then if you have been encouraged in some way and you want to share it with the group, I would really help. I would really uh, love to hear your ideas. Um, what has been helpful to you in a just in a um, maybe a stressful moment and anything, any little idea. Sometimes it's just the smallest idea that takes something that is a stressor and just lightens the load a little bit or helps. So if you can think of something like that, um, you know, maybe just an idea that makes things more manageable. Um, so, um, so basically, um, I was just thinking about as I was kind of considering this over the last couple of weeks and kind of watching for what I thought needed, you know, if, if there needed to be some encouragement in some area. Uh, we've covered some of the basics like the map and the timeline and those kind of things. And now I'm just thinking we're, some people are a few weeks into school and you've run into some of those things that are um, maybe stressful, maybe, oh wait, what do I do about this? Um, those kind of things. So, um, Someone said this week in our group that they were thankful for other moms being able to answer questions. I am too. I've had that along the way. And people reminding her not to try to to do it perfectly. And um, I think that we all need that encouragement uh, from time to time. And others saying they needed wisdom and guidance. So um, I just took that this week, took, took a, um, like I said, reached out to my mentors about a week ago and gave them um, some questions. And then um, just I just want to basically encourage us that every year, every season, we're all starting fresh. And at the beginning of the year like this, we're all um, in a new season and we're all uh, finding what works. And so if this is your first year or if, if you've been homeschooling for a while, maybe it's your first year with sunlight or um, wherever you are in your journey, um, I would say this is our 15th year of using sunlight, but we have a um, our second started college this year and he is actually local. And so um, we had a rough week this week. We encountered a first fender bender. We encountered our um, a first uh, losing keys and maybe having a little bit of panic thinking that the, the car might be lost. You know, we've, we've had those uh, growing pains this week at our house. Um, uh, about the back to school, you know, um, and so part of some of that is home things happening in our homeschool and some some other factors outside. Um, during this time, I may have a plumber who's coming to the house for the third time, so hopefully someone else will get the door when he comes. So we have had, I've heard a lot of you having sickness and that kind of thing, so I just thought encouragement might be in order today. So, um, 
when you have those discouraging moments, I think it's good to have some encouragement along the way. So um, some of the things that I heard um, from some moms, and these are just, again, some of the things I remember from moms that I took to heart and used in our homeschool. Um, if you're finding that you are getting into that zone of being very task oriented as you go, if you're finding that you're veering into getting it all done mode, and I've heard several people say that this week, um, if you are starting to lose sight of that, you know, why am I homeschooling um, in those moments, um, one idea that a mom um, that I worked with years ago, she let me know that um, once a week, with each one of her children, once she realized she was getting into that, just checking the boxes, just, um, you know, getting things done, um, she started, she had five children, and with her children, she, um, I think they were, let's see, they were a, a boy, girl, girl, boy, girl, and um, so basically once a week, every week, she had time with each one of her children and it wasn't exactly scheduled. She might've had a day. I think she may have had a specific day and, but they all did this at different times because they all had different schedules and that kind of thing. But they had our time is what they called it, where they sat down together and they could talk about anything that the child wanted to talk about. Um, but just once a week, with that child, that was something that helped her kind of um, stay focused for the homeschool journey um, and just having that connection time with her child. Um, I heard this week, um, I already had this on the list and then I saw it and um, somebody mentioned something similar in one of the, um, one of the posts um, about what I had um, written down is just add music. If things are stressful, a lot of times when my guys were super little um, and things were noisy and crazy, if I just added, like turned on some, um, I had a little classical music CD. This is before we were even doing sunlight actually. Um, and I would, I started at, um, turning that on during um, getting ready for dinner time when things started to get crazy. And that helped so much or some upbeat music that we could, you know, dance around in the kitchen too. And that was something that came up in, in the app this week. Um, so yeah, just add music. If things are getting, if you have a stressful time of day or that kind of thing, um, another thing that someone in our group mentioned was um, let silliness help. Um, with the discussion and the Q&A on the questions, I think her son was, um, the student was saying he didn't know the answers, you know, after, uh, you know, she had asked the questions and, and she'd gotten to the third one and he said he didn't know any of them and was just kind of having that um, blank you know, look, I guess. And um, so after getting those non-answers, they kind of stopped and started just, okay, let's, let's give the most ridiculous wrong answer you can think of. So they just added a little silliness. And after giving these silly, crazy answers and giggling about that, then he came back and he was able, he was like, well, and he gave a partial answer on one and then he, he was able to answer another. And so basically he, he did know some of the answers. Maybe he just wasn't sure or for whatever reason, uh, didn't want to answer. So, um, I think sometimes adding silliness in, um, to hard moments or moments of frustration or either just moments where they lock up and, and, and you're not getting anywhere that can help. Um, so I also talked to, um, one of my mentors from years ago and she said one of her go-tos was to think of herself as a man as management and that her job was to manage and direct. Do you just feel like there's so much to do and there's so much responsibility and everybody needs you and that kind of thing and you're building um, independence a little at a time, um, maybe not as fast as we want them to, to, to go into independence. But um, she was saying that she felt like it was her job to manage and to, to direct. And sometimes we want them to just take off on their own and, hey, I thought this was going to be independence building. And um, I do think that that there is a time where you do sit down. I think a good manager does that. Um, it may be, 
irritating. You want people to, you know, just know what to do. But she said she saw that her job was to manage and direct and I could demonstrate and work alongside them as a good manager does so that my kids could become self-motivated motivated and capable adults. And that's not going to happen today. So there is a process and there is a part where we do have to do that hard part of sitting there and working through and teaching them and then saying it and saying it again and saying it again. And when you're doing that, just know that that is working you know, you are making those deposits and it does take that energy of, of taking time with them and going with them. And, um, I mean, that's, that goes, um, uh, for any, my husband is going right now with, um, coworker, with a coworker and making sure, and that's hard because he has to leave town and go to the thing. And, um, it would be much easier if you didn't have to do that, <laughs> but that is part of life is that time where you do have to t put the time in. And the more you do that, the better the other side will be the independent. So you're making deposits when you're taking that time to do the thing that is hard, which is taking the time and focusing on that task that you just wish they could do already all by themselves. Um, just know that in that time you are building and kind of think of that management role and you do have to put that, that time in of teaching, taking time with. Um, I wrote down just some things that I saw. This is not from this year, but from a previous year. So some people may not, um, some current people who are new may have not seen this, but from Sarita, she gave some good encouragement um, some time back. Um, she talked about allowing time at the beginning of the year to let things, you know, time to let, to settle in and, um, and know that there are months and years ahead and we have some time um, to develop and to learn and to grow. And sometimes it might be surprising to you. Like I thought they would be able to do this thing, um, without my help <laughs> or, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but just allow some time to settle into the year and, and, at, and know that that adjustment time is, you're going to need some adjustment time and maybe longer depending on how long they had been in school or how long you had been doing something different. It just takes time to kind of adjust to the schedule. So just know that and don't, um, I guess, uh, be discouraged in the moment. Just know that it does take a little time to settle in. And I, I do remember feeling at times like there are so many things that I want to teach my children. And I felt like that, that day, that way, especially on days when they were grouchy with each other or they were arguing about the same thing that you've already covered with them and you think that they should stop doing that by now because you've already talked about that <laughs> and um, surely they've gotten that lesson by now. Um, but I think that if you take, you know, just basically thinking about the fact that you do have um, you know, months, you have years, you have time to work on this and, and they are where they are. It is called childhood for a reason. They're not adults. They're, they're developing and give that time for them to develop, to learn and to grow and know it, it does take a lot of patience and, and, um, and, and not being discouraged in the moment because, um, I, I do have a, um, a, a, I guess a brother situation that at one point I talked to a friend about and she had a son who was similar, had a similar situation with his brother. They were, and she told one thing that she told me that blew me away after all the stories that she had told me is that they named their sons after each other, you know, years later. And I thought, okay, that's the encouragement that I needed that, okay, we're going to get through this, this time. And years later, I am seeing, you know, growth and so much, um, seeing, seeing moments where what was stressful at the, you know, at first and the, the things that were hard, um, seeing those, those things get better and, um, but it can be discouraging the moment and I, I don't discount that. Um, another thing it takes, um, time to understand your children's learning styles. That was from Sarita as well. Um, and I do think that that is the case that, um, if this is, if this is new to you all working together, you know, learning how they work, or if you're new to sunlight, learning how they, um, work within what we're, we, we have a different, um, 
you know, it's not a traditional education. Um, so we have some different things, learning how they listen and, and um, the read alouds that we do, what's going to work best for each of your children may be a little bit different. And so how to, how to manage all that. And there are great ideas for that. We'll talk about this year, but um, just that um, taking time to understand your children's learning styles and pay attention to that. Like how, uh, what works for each of your um, children and um, and and even if they're not strong in an area um, instead of saying oh my guys are visual learners so I'm not going to worry about this other area they need to develop in all the areas so I want to bring them along in the areas that they're not strong in I don't want to just hyper focus on the area where oh this is how they learn and we're going to just forget the rest because they're going to need all those things and so um, anyway so if that helps just um, taking time to understand um, um, the, and just paying attention to that, their, their learning styles. And then the last, um, I, I just picked out a few that she had listed in a longer list, but one of my favorites is just keeping the long view in mind, which I've talked about a little bit already. So I, this is quick today. I just wanted to give that encouragement. If you have things, I mean, big things, some of this is big view. Some of this is more, um, maybe you have an idea, something that has worked for you that you were struggling with the first week or two or three of school. And now you've found a way to manage it. Pop that in the in the comments, if you will. I really think that that can help if we if we share those ideas. Maybe something. Sometimes I come up with an idea and I was like, "Wow, that's brilliant!" And it works really well. It might work for two weeks, but it, hey, that was two weeks that that it worked. So, um, and it might work longer. So, anyway, if you have ideas, if you have um, encouragement uh, during this time as we're um, all new to the year, new to adjusting to our schedule, uh, I guess overall just encouraging you that we're all um, starting over every year and with new um, ages and stages and new things to work on and uh, new things to learn. So um, I hope that you have had a good week and that you will pop in the comments again what what has been encouraging to you today. If there's an idea that you have or that you've heard from a mentor of yours, um, share that and um, let's encourage each other. And I hope you guys have a great day.